Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park is the world's oldest operating roller coaster. This historic ride was almost lost forever in the 1980s, but thankfully it's still operational and you will not find a ride quite like it anywhere else. Now this ride looks gentle. You have absolutely no restraints and a super low top speed, but looks are deceiving. This is a sneaky wild ride and I'll explain why in this review. Leap the Dips opened back in 1902. Designed by Edward Joy Morris and built by the Federal Construction Company, this is a rare side friction coaster. Most coasters built nowadays feature three sets of wheels, road wheels above the track, side wheels to prevent the train from moving laterally, and upstop wheels underneath the train to prevent it from lifting off the track. Leap the Dips was built two decades ago before upstop wheels were a thing. This makes Leap the Dips a rare side friction coaster. Most of the remaining side friction coasters operate with a brake band to regulate the speed, but Leap the Dips does not. As a result, there are points where the cars can and do bounce off the track. It is such a weird and freaky sensation. After the 1985 season, Leap the Dips was closed due to structural issues and a lack of maintenance funds. The future of this ride was very much in doubt. The ride sat idle for years, but there were a series of developments in the 1990s that led to its reopening. First, the coaster was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1993 and designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1996. This prevented the ride from being demolished. Second, the American coaster enthusiasts helped create the Leap the Dips Foundation, which accepted private donations to raise enough money to save the ride. Then in 1997, Lakemont began the process of fully restoring the coaster. It was retracked using the ride's original carpentry techniques, and the coaster triumphantly reopened in 1999. The coaster received another scare after the 2016 season. Lake Mont Park as a whole closed. The park had been struggling financially for years. They remained closed for the next two years, and they transformed themselves from a traditional amusement park into a family entertainment center. But when they reopened in 2019, Leap the Dip sat idle. The coaster fortunately reopened in 2020. Now, this ride's operation can be a bit spotty. In peak season, Lakemont only runs their rides four days per week, so definitely check the calendar in advance of your visit to make sure the wood coasters are operational. Further, Leap the Dips' old design makes it susceptible to cross ties breaking. The park has extras on hand when this occurs, but it can still take the ride out of commission for a day to fix it. Most of Leap the Dips is white like a lot of old woodies, but these replacement sections are brown. This helps the park identify which sections had been replaced. So while it causes the ride not to have a cohesive look like some rides, it is completely understandable given how unique this ride is and there is a functional reason behind it. El Toro Ryan has a more in-depth video about this, so definitely check that out if you want to learn more. Since Lake Mod is not a full day park, I'd recommend starting your day elsewhere and calling to verify if Leap the Dips is operational before making the drive. This coaster is also very temperamental. There are three factors impacting this ride's speed. One, the ride is notorious for running slowly in the morning, and it has been known to stall out, requiring staff members to push it forwards. It also started to slow down towards the end of the night when the sun went down. Two, the ride is extremely weight dependent. Most of my rides were solo, but the few I experienced with fuller trains had some extra speed and power. Three, some cars run faster than others. The red car is the fastest according to the ride operator and locals. Leap the Dips has a posted max speed of 10 miles per hour or 16 kilometers per hour, but I've heard it can run 50% faster in the right conditions. So if you want the best ride, arrive midday, fill the train with three other guests, and hope the red train is on the course. Leap the Dips does not have an automated block system like modern coasters. The ride is typically staffed by just a single person and manually operated. The operator deploys the brakes and pushes the car through the station. As a result, the ride will almost always run just one car nowadays. The operator said it was possible to have two cars going if there was a second staff member, but it's just not worth it. This places extra risk and responsibility in the ride operators. Plus, crowds usually do not warrant it anyways. When I visited on a Thursday, the park was so quiet that I was able to stay and leap the dips without getting off for the final 20 minutes. The operator eventually dialed back the brakes so my car would roll right through the station onto the lift hill. And it's quite the bargain to ride too. If you don't have a wristband, it's just $3 per lap 
and you get a commemorative ticket with that ride. Each car consists of two rows of two, much like modern wild mice coasters, but unlike basically every other coaster out there, Leap the Dips has zero restraints, not even a static lap bar or a seat belt. There is nothing holding you in. The seats can be a bit narrow with two adults side by side, but they're extremely well cushioned which helps absorb the bumps. I didn't think seat selection would matter much on a single car ride, but boy was I wrong. There is a big difference between the front and back row. The front is considerably smoother, which does make sense because you're not sitting atop the wheels. But if you're a thrill seeker, you'll want to ride in the back row. You'll get a far wilder ride with some scary airtime. It's some of the most unique airtime out there. Once dispatched, you turn the corner and ascend the 41 foot or 12 meter tall lift hill. While you don't get too much of a view, I am always in awe of the old fashioned anti-rollback system. The paddle boards extending from the side remind me more of the system you see on log flumes than a roller coaster nowadays. You start with a small drop and gallop around a slow turn. The rails undulate up and down, so the car bobs up and down like a horse as it moves through the ride. There was one kink in the first turn that was pronounced enough to give a little pop of airtime. These imperfections give the ride a lot of character. Leap the dips forms a figure eight pattern. When you cross through the center, you're treated to a dip. These are the wildest parts of the ride by far. Do not be fooled by their small stature. They will throw you about mercilessly. They sort of feel like fun car crashes between their rawness and erratic forces. The first dip gives those in back a good burst of air time. Then you rise upwards and you'll feel the whole car lift off the track. This results in the seat paddle boarding your hiney and throwing everyone into the air. It is such a quirky and violent air time moment. The one downside with these dips is that the valleys are very bumpy. The ride has minimalistic supports, so the wood really flexes in this section. It's like riding a jackhammer up front, but those in back will really get slammed down. It's an experience not for everyone, but I could tolerate it between the cushioned seats and the fact I was laughing at the absurdity of a ride being this slow and wild. The turn that follows the dip is another slow one, but you again gallop through it. This leads into the second dip. The descent offers no air time this time, but the small ascent afterwards pops everyone into the air, just not as forcefully as the first one. The next turn is placed directly underneath the first, and it leads into the most intense element on the ride, the third dip. This is pure chaos in the back. Unlike the others that consist of a single descent and ascent, this one has two dips in a row. Those in back get slammed into the air four times in rapid fire succession. Any time you change elevation, you are bounced out of your seat. It's absurd. Up front, you skip the airtime on the descents, but you get a forceful lift on each ascent. The next turn allows you to recover from the madness. Then you reach the ride's largest drop, which is a whopping 9 feet or 3 meters, but this has some bite to it. If you have a fully loaded train, those in back will get another burst of airtime. Then everyone will get quite the bang as you're slammed back down in the valley that follows. You then have a longer, more gradual ascent, and this one unfortunately doesn't offer the airtime of the others. At this point, Leap the Dips takes its foot off the gas. You have another slow turn, followed by a small dip, a bunny hill, and a little ascent into the station. These final hills are smooth and uneventful, unlike all the dips that preceded them. The operator will then bring your car to a stop, ending the 1,452 foot or 443 meter long ride. So what would I rate Leap the Dips? I would give this classic an 8 out of 10. This is such a unique experience. You're literally writing history here, so it would be noteworthy even if it did absolutely nothing. But this ride has some genuine thrills. The Dips offer some of the weirdest airtime of any coaster, especially if you're in the back row. It felt like the car was bucking me upwards. Some may find this motion uncomfortable, but for me, it was pure fun. I usually came off laughing because I couldn't believe a ride like this still exists. This ride needs to be on every coaster enthusiast bucket list because of the historical significance and its sneaky power. So those are my thoughts on Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park. What are your thoughts on this classic coaster? Did you get a ride like the ones I described? Or did you get a ride that was wilder or tamer? Let me know down in the comments. As I mentioned earlier, this ride is known to be temperamental. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos 
you're a cannabis coaster. Thanks for watching.